liftoff. Nearly nine years ago, on July 8, 2011, Atlantis lifted off from the Kennedy Space Center on the final flight of the space shuttle program. After 30 years, the shuttle era was ending. The space shuttle spreads its wings one final time. Just as the shuttle changed how we thought of space exploration, the flight we are about to see may profoundly change the future of space travel. This is a new generation, a new era in human spaceflight. And, and when I say it's new, what I mean is NASA has long um, had this idea that we need to purchase, own, and operate hardware to get to space. And in the past, that has been true. Uh, but now in this new era, NASA especially in low Earth orbit, NASA has an ability to be a customer. Do you do it on the back one normally, Bob? Two NASA astronauts, both space shuttle veterans, Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley, will be sitting inside a SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule atop a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. They will be the first U.S. astronauts lifting off from U.S. soil on a U.S.-built spacecraft since Atlantis. I think we have a different perspective of the importance of, of coming uh, to Florida, launching again on an American rocket from the Florida coast, and, and generations of people who maybe didn't get a chance to see uh, a space shuttle launch getting a chance again to see human spaceflight uh, uh, in our own backyard, if you will, is, is pretty exciting to, to be a part of. Ignition, lift off. Getting to this point where humans are finally on board has been grueling. After nearly a decade of development, SpaceX had to successfully complete an in-flight abort test. And there you just saw the trunk jettisoning. And flew Demo-1. An uncrewed Dragon to the International Space Station and returned it to Earth. Their test flight, called Demo-2, will also take Hurley and Behnken to the ISS. I'm nervous now, not because I'm on camera, but because I'm about ready to fly Bob and Doug. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I will be nervous until, I'll, there'll be a little sense of relief when they're in orbit. How's that? I'll feel a little relief when they're in orbit. I'll feel more relief when they get to station. And then obviously I will start sleeping again when, they, uh, when they're back safely uh, on the planet. But when they will be coming back to Earth is still, so to speak, up in the air. The mission had originally been planned for about two weeks. With only one U.S. astronaut, Chris Cassidy, currently on the ISS, there's a backlog of work. Hurley and Bankett could spend several months on the station. Bankett even spent time training for a spacewalk if one is needed. And then uh, was it counter to? There is no way to underestimate just how much is riding on this mission. Pressure is immense. Dragon, separation confirmed. This is a humbling job. I think we're up to it. NASA has shelled out more than $3 billion to SpaceX for the development of the Crew Dragon vehicle and six operational flights. And since the shuttle program ended, NASA has paid the Russian Space Agency nearly $4 billion for seats on their spacecraft to fly U.S. astronauts to the station. But above all else, there was one criteria Crew Dragon had to meet. It had to be significantly safer than the space shuttle. Hurley believes it is. This vehicle has end-to-end -end abort capability, you know, on the pad all the way up to orbit. And so that, that perspective for me is, is huge um, compared to shuttle where there were what we called black zones where there were scenarios where it didn't really matter if you had the right combination of failures, you were likely not going to survive uh, an abort. When Crew Dragon flies, SpaceX will become the first private company to fly humans. Hurley and Bankin say they've been so focused on training, they've not thought much about their place in history. But clearly, they will be making it. For my radar, I'm John Zarella. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.